by the British Council in East Jerusalem. And basically, putting it in a nutshell, it's a project that, uh, um, that tries to photograph the refugee where they are today and then uh, juxtapose it with an image of where they actually came from. This particular project, Homeland Lost, is, uh, well, this particular part of Homeland Lost, I should say, is uh, dealing with the Palestinian uh, refugee uh, issue in the Middle East, which uh, actually, as a lady told me this morning, has actually become a global issue, not so much a Middle Eastern issue, which I tended to agree with her. And we really wanted to take the politics you know, out of the uh, project, so it was photographed in black and white. Um, in the sense that, yes, the world is in color, but uh, we really wanted to take everything away and just take it down to the, uh, to the basics. And also, we didn't actually want to show Palestinians as victims. We really wanted to show them as, um, as people who do contribute to their new societies, who, do, uh, who don't all languish in refugee camps, or, um, um, but so in the sense we have some people in Beirut who work as engineers, who work as doctors, who definitely do not live in refugee camps. But of course, the essence is they cannot return home to what is today uh, Israel. So I will stop the... Uh, okay. Okay, so this starts off with a, uh, well, um, with an old Palestinian village. Since we have the, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, we have the, uh, uh, which is the old cedar tree, and then with the old Palestinian houses in the hills. And today this is uh, part of an Israeli uh, kibbutz. And you see a lot of these sort of dotted around the Israeli landscape, old Ottoman-style houses, and um, which, uh, you yeah, know, which does sort of attest to the past. And... Uh, this is, this is a guy who has a propane business in, uh, in uh, Shatila refugee camp in Beirut. And then uh, juxtaposed next to it will be uh, where he came from in uh, what is today Israel. Oh, actually, nope, another image. Because um, obviously they come from the same village. And this is uh, a refugee camp in Beirut too. And this is what was left of their uh, of their village, you know, inside of uh, inside of what is today Israel, which is uh, the old mosque, which is obviously getting quite overgrown. And this is a family that live in a refugee camp just north of Beirut. The mother was actually born in uh, what is today Israel, in a, uh, uh, which is now in Israeli kibbutz. And he was also from the same village, who is a doctor in Beirut. And this is today the Israeli uh, kibbutz. And uh, actually, it's quite interesting. I didn't think about it until today. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, new towns and uh, villages and cities that have been built in Israel, actually, they say, very much have a Russian feel to them, because um, there have been so many Russian immigrants to Israel in the last 15 years. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis architecture and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, I probably should have done something about that before I came. Um, but uh, and this is another family that uh, that are now fishermen, uh, just north of Beirut, or rather the uh, uh, the two brothers are fishermen. And uh, and this is uh, what's left of that village called Al Basa, in, uh, in, uh, which is very near the Lebanese border. So maybe they're about 40 kilometers from home. And this is uh, one of the internally displaced inside of Israel, um, uh, who lives in it, um, and uh, what is now, and obviously the, village, the, uh, the villages inside of Israel. Well, for instance, this is the uh, village he lives in today. And then uh, on his old village, which actually you can see the old mosque, you know, from the, the roof of his house in the new village, um, and the amusement park's going to go up. So, um, you know, obviously the land is uh, coming up for different uses. And we, all, we wanted to photograph them as something that was left from their previous life in Palestine. Oops, oh dear, that was a little fast. But he was left with an ID uh, that was issued by the British government. And this, for instance, is an image of her husband, um, who unfortunately now is uh, deceased. And uh, 
This is actually the mosque of the gentleman previously you can see from his uh, roof. So his new village is about maybe three, well, about two kilometers away or so. But obviously not allowed to, uh, not allowed to pray in there, nor is he able to uh, uh, visit. Um, and this is uh, grandfather and well, grandfather and granddaughter um, in uh, Al Bakr refugee camp in Beirut. And this is uh, what is sort of left, and of course it's quite interesting in the sense of pine is sort of used to, uh, uh, to uh, cover up what, is, uh, what was there previously. And this is a lady who left Palestine in her, uh, well, basically the only thing she had left was her uh, wedding dress. And so she said, well, yeah, can you please photograph me in my wedding dress? And uh, so I did. And uh, that's the only thing she had left from her previous life. And this is sort of interesting in the sense you see the village. Sorry, yeah. Can you speak to the microphone? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, well, that's much better. Okay. And, uh, okay, well, this is sort of quite an interesting one in the sense that uh, um, in the background you can see the, uh, you know, you can see the, uh, the old Palestinian graveyard. And, of course, here is a, uh, well, what was, of course, known in Israel as the War of Independence or to the Palestinians as the Nakba or disaster. Um, because there was, a, uh, there was a big battle here between the Palestinians and the uh, Israelis in 1948, and of course here you have the um, um, you have uh, some wreckage of an Israeli, um, you know, an Israeli. Uh, I believe it was a well, an Israeli jeep or uh, armored armored car that was destroyed by the Palestinians. So you do see a lot of these memorials uh, dotted around. So I thought it was kind of ironic, um, you know, the two. Uh, uh, two peoples, you know, the Palestinians in the background and the Israelis in the foreground. And this is, um, you know, as we were sort of saying, going completely off, of, you know, sort of getting out of the refugee camps. Um, the father to the, I guess it would be to your left, um, um, was the, uh, owned a um, engineering company in West Africa. and. Uh, and you know, he has a British passport, but he obviously, even with a British passport, cannot, um, you know, cannot go back to what is today, uh, you know, what is today Israel. And um, although his village wasn't completely destroyed, and so half the Arab population is still in uh, northern Israel, and uh, which you can sort of see the overview here, and, and the background of the hills, uh, at the hills of the, uh, you know, is the Lebanese border. So uh, when the armistice was signed. Um, um, you know, half the village was allowed to stay. And uh, this gentleman, for instance, has a Canadian passport and uh, you know, has come back from Canada and uh, lives in Beirut and has a television repair business. And uh, also what has sort of happened to some of these Palestinian villages, this is actually a very beautiful beach in northern Israel, uh, right on the Lebanese border. Um, and so what has happened to a lot of these villages, they've been made into uh, tourist resorts or into parks. Um, you know where people, uh, you know people sort of go and in, enjoy or admire, um, you know the beautiful old houses. Um, let's see the next one. And um, this gentleman was a um, is a lawyer, and he, um, um, and unfortunately, very sadly, his daughter was killed in an American air raid in uh, in uh, uh, Libya. So it was sort of a very very tragic life. And um, and his uh, um, and his family were from Jerusalem, and unfortunately, a, well, a religious school has been built on top of uh, where his house used to be, which is the basketball court. So. And this is um, a lady by the name of Sylvia Snez, who uh, you know still has the keys to the front door of her house, uh, which is also in uh, 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 West Jerusalem, I should say. Uh, which now, of course, today has sort of become one of the most expensive areas of uh, of Jerusalem to live in, and um, you know, sort of beautiful old Ottoman style. And she lives in. Uh, she actually was an employee of the British Embassy in uh, Beirut. This is a house you know, today, 
um, which actually has not changed at all. Because um, obviously I did a, a digital photograph and, and uh, sent it up to him and said, my God, it looks almost the same as the day I left in 1948, which is quite amazing for 58 years later. Uh, this one is entitled The Three Professors, um, who uh, all teach at the American University in Beirut, um, who uh, yeah, came from very, uh, well, the gentleman to, I guess would be your right, comes from the Halidi family, and they've always been, uh, Islamic scholars have always been scholars, and then the Sakali in the center, and uh, Dijani, and the Dijanis, of course, who are a very wealthy uh, landowning Palestinian family, who, uh, uh, who are sort of dispersed everywhere. Hopefully the next image should be coming up. And uh, ah, yes, and this was the Dijani house in uh, in uh, West Jerusalem, um, which is uh, and this lady. Um, the only thing she had left was her uh, uh, were photographs from a previous life in um, in Palestine, and you know also lives in Beirut. So this part of the project was really sort of trying to uh, sort of show that uh, you know not all, all Palestinians are hapless victims who uh, um, you know who uh, um, who don't really contribute to the societies that they become and, and just language in refugee camps, but really sort of wanted to show them as uh, you know they are individuals, they are people. And of course, this image is sort of trying to bring the conflict up to today, or up to uh, up to uh, um, up to date, really, in the sense of uh, showing, you know, what is. And this is actually, well, unfortunately, I didn't get the petrol pumps, but this is a uh, petrol station um, in Jerusalem that has sort of had a wall that's gone right through the middle of it, and. Um, and, uh, and his original house is about maybe five kilometers away in, in a very exclusive Jerusalem suburb, um, and which has now become a bar. Oh, my, is it, okay, okay. Ten minutes more. Two minutes or ten minutes? Ten, ten minutes, okay. Um, so basically, um, what we wanted, oh, sorry? Oh, what I wanted to do was um, also, well, as I said, you know, initially, um, you know, I photographed in Beirut. I got no permission in Syria. The Syrians were not interested at all. Uh, went to Jordan, the West Bank, Gaza, and of course the internally uh, displaced inside. And um, uh, oh gosh, oh gosh, I lost my place. Hold on. And then this is also, I suppose, what I wanted to try and do is sort of show distance. Um, this is actually the original UNRWA house they were given in 1948, uh, which is in the West Bank, and um, which now has, has become a storeroom. Um, but, uh, um, and just sort of showing distance that they're only sort of, yes, I mean, it's about maybe five kilometers away from their original house, and this is now an Israeli uh, kibbutz uh, with nothing left of the, uh, the original village. And this gentleman is in uh, Amman, Jordan. Uh, he has a carpet business, um, but still, you know, the distances are uh, very, very short in this part of the world. So it's only about maybe oh, 40 kilometers away, if that. You know, from Amman to uh, you know to uh, no, maybe 50 kilometers, I should say, to where his original village was on the outskirts of Jerusalem. And this is um, actually, if you look in the background, you can see. Oh, actually, unfortunately, the part. Um, you can see the, uh, there's an Israeli kibbutz in the background, and this is actually the uh, road going up from Tel Aviv to uh, Jerusalem. And uh, these two gentlemen actually live in Jerusalem, maybe two kilometers away, and that's their house in a village called Lifta, or um, well, the remains of the house by the side of the road. So with this one, I was actually, you know, I wanted to show that I could actually, you, know, you can actually take refugees back to, um, um, to where they originally uh, came from. It took us maybe a 10 minute drive. Uh, but as many, but it's, I mean, you might as well be a million miles away in the sense that obviously they can never live there again. And uh, and we did get questions, you know, what are you doing doing here, especially taking a photograph, um, uh, which obviously arose in a tremendous amount of uh, suspicion. Um, and this is uh, the next image is just another image of, uh, of the landscape and how it's sort of changing, you know, sort of juxtaposing Palestine with Israel in the background. Oh, unfortunately, the uh, kibbutz did not come out so well in the background. 
And uh, this is the sort of the infamous Palestinian key. Uh, we photographed, uh, photographed in a refugee camp uh, right next to Bethlehem um, in the West Bank. And um, there's obviously nothing left of the original village, but a uh, um, but an Israeli an Israeli new town has been uh, you know built on top. And this image, oh, sorry. Oh. Take it in your hand. Okay, maybe not. Um, let's have a look. Yes, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Oh, gosh. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Like this. Um, this, this image actually uh, was taken in Gaza in 2006, yes, 2006, and actually this gentleman is a Bedouin uh, from a region that's just outside of Gaza, and I wanted to photograph him uh, with his tent, because unfortunately his house had been, uh, um, had been bulldozed uh, about two days before, so in, of course in 1948 the Bedouin were removed from uh, the areas around Gaza and thrown into Gaza, and obviously they lived in tents. And so 58 years later, uh, he's back in a tent again, unfortunately. And um, which I, uh, you know, sort of the, almost, well, sadly, the full circle. And, and, this is, um, and this is where, you know, where his tribe used to be, roughly, or where they used to sort of move around. In that part of Israel, um, there are a lot of uh, uh, Bedouins still to this day. And this is also trying to bring the conflict up to date. Um, in the sense that uh, this this gentleman's nephew was involved in the um, in the conflict, and um, and of course the Israelis had come to uh, bulldoze his house. It says uh, collective punishment, and uh, this also sort of wanted to uh, show his uh, his son had been a uh, policeman who unfortunately had uh, had uh, had died also. And this is sort of what is left of uh, you know, their village in uh, what is today Israel. And um, this is another Palestinian family um, who now live in Beirut, uh, who have their deeds, which a lot of whoops, which a lot of Palis oh dear, which a lot of Palestinians have. Um, but um, but unfortunately, of course, you know, the deeds don't really mean anything anymore. But it's, it sort of collects as a, is kept as a collective memory of uh, you know of the loss, um, as well as photographs from before, and um, and this lady uh, lives in Amman, Jordan, and um, she works as a lawyer with the, with the UN, and so and of course one of the big things was well we want something from uh, um, something what is Palestine to you or something from your previous life in Palestine. And she said well this is what you know Palestine is to me is that uh, eventually we will get our freedom. And this, um, well this is what well, in the background is Jaffa, and Jaffa has sort of become quite a tourist town in the sense that you know, there's a lot of, uh, well there's a beach down there, a lot of um, places to go shopping, so on and so forth. And if you look in the foreground, these are the stones that are left of uh, Manchia, uh, which was a part of Jaffa, uh, which is now actually, which is now uh, quite an exclusive beach in uh, Tel Aviv. I think it's going to move. Yes. And this gentleman owns a, uh, he was also from Manchia. Uh, he's a gentleman who owns a fashion business in Amman, in Jordan. And um, this is sort of showing Palestinian entrepreneurship, you know, juxtaposed with, unfortunately, you know, the loss that this lady has felt. But they came from the same town in, uh, in what is today Israel. Oops, and this, oh dear, wait a minute, hold on. Let's see what's happened here, hold on one second. Wait a minute, somehow, some way. Um, and this gentleman is a Palestinian artist uh, who lives in Shatila refugee camp and uh, photographed him with, um, um, uh, well, with the key, which obviously is a symbol of return and also the symbol of homeland, but of course with the Handala, um, which is a Palestinian, uh, 
uh, cartoon character, and unfortunately, the which I can't remember his name right now, but the um, cartoon character was uh, assassinated in the 70s.